All right, the cat is, you can't see it, but there's a little cat spot down below underneath my desk. And um, having looked at a basic class that's pretty boring, let's do something more fun. Um, this will be the last example that we do the full kind of code together. Um, the next two, I'm just going to show you and kind of walk you through because they're a lot more complicated. Um, and, you know, as we move on, these projects do get a lot more you know, there's just a lot of tedious stuff to do, but um, we're going to talk now about lists of objects. So before we created just single objects, um, you know, two squares, not that exciting, but we, what we can do is we can create lists of those objects. We can add and remove them and make some pretty cool stuff. So um, what I want to do is I want to make a rabbit simulator. I want to make these little rabbits that run around um, and um, randomly generate additional rabbits. So before we dive in, I know I want to create a folder called assets and I'd like to upload a file to that. And I've got my little rabbit guy over here. So I um, I created this image while I found it on Google Image Search and I deleted the background. So it's a PNG with a clear background and I'm just gonna upload that to my folder here. Perfect, cool. Um, oops, go back to my sketch. All right, great. So um, let's see, before we jump into my class, I'd like to load that image um, before I forget. And um, I'm going to make a global variable called body. Um, now, you might be thinking, oh, but wouldn't I want this image to be part of my class? And you could, um, but then for every rabbit, you're going to be loading that image into memory on your computer. It's going to be keeping track. First of all, it's going to slow it down because it's going to have to load that image. Um, and it's just unnecessary. In this case, all my rabbits are going to have the same, um, same photo as their body. So I'm going to say body. Uh, it's load image assets rabbit.png. And let's just run it and make sure everything's cool. Yes, no errors. Awesome. So now I want to create this rabbit class. Um, and before, you know, before I actually think about how I'm going to display them and all of this stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and make this class. So um, again, always capitalize for the name of the class and my constructor. Um, I think I'd like to give it an X and a Y position as an argument. That way I can specify where they start. And um, so X and Y are gonna look like that. I'd like them to have a random speed so they're moving in different directions. So I can say this.speed X. Um, you know, and I've already kind of picked these variables to work for me. Uh, in Creative Programming 2, we talk a lot more about simulation. We use like uh, vectors and there's all kinds of other cool smart ways that you might do this. Um, great, I think we'll leave it there for now. We're gonna add one more cool touch in a little bit. Um, then I know, let's just display this rabbit just to make sure everything's working. So I'm gonna create a method called display. I'm gonna use matrix transformations. This is really key here too, um, because I just can then very quickly translate to this.x and this.y. Don't forget the this part, which means variables that are internal to our class. Um, this means I don't have to like do everything relative to x and y. I can just make it relative to zero, zero, really easy. And then I wanna do image mode center, image body, at zero, zero, super easy. Um, and let's then, let's make one rabbit and just make sure this is working. So we'll call this guy rabbit. In setup, we can say rabbit equals new rabbit. The cat is back. Again, I'm not sure if you can see him, but he kind of does this circuit where he goes up on the radiator and then comes across my desk because he wants to be pet or lie on my keyboard. Um, anyway, we create a new rabbit. Um, let's put it. Let's put them at um, width divided by two, height divided by two, just to start. So this uh, creates that rabbit. And then in draw, we can say um, rabbit.display. And let's just make sure, boom, we see our rabbit looks really good. Cool. Um, let's see, I'm gonna change a couple of things. I've picked a nice kind of green color for the background so that we can have him running around some grass, that's better than gray. And 
now I want to make a list of rabbits. I don't just want one rabbit or, you know, let's say I want a whole bunch of rabbits. I don't want to have to create rabbit one, rabbit two. That's a total mess. Instead, I can create an empty list called rabbits, and then I can add rabbits to this list. I can remove rabbits, all of this stuff. So then in my, oh, and then let's make a variable for how many rabbits we want to have to start. And I want one for now, but you could then experiment and just change this number and it'll make more or less. Then in my setup, actually, you know what? We need two rabbits because we all know what rabbits do. We're going to have the rabbits multiply and make more and more. And if we have one, it doesn't work. So we're going to make two rabbits to start. Now, here's where I can use the power of a for loop to um, generate all these rabbits. Um, so I can say i equals zero, i is less than num rabbits. And now I can make my um, rabbits here and then add them to this list. So x, I know I want to be between zero and the width. Y will be random also. And then my rabbit is going to be equal to a new rabbit x and y. Now we need to do one more thing. You can't forget. Um, this makes the rabbit but it doesn't put it anywhere. It's going to disappear the moment we leave this for loop. So now I need to say rabbits.push, which adds it to that list. Hi, buddy. Um, rabbit. So I use a for loop. I create these random variables. Um, I create a new instance of the rabbit and then add it to our list. Then in our draw, we can do a very similar thing. We can say for let i equals zero, i is less than uh, rabbits.length, because we know we're going to be adding more rabbits later. Um, I++, plus plus, here it comes again. We should do cats instead of rabbits. Um, and then we can do um, let rabbit equal, we need to get it from our list. So we access it using the index. And then we say rabbit.display. And now when we run it, we should see these two rabbits pop up on the screen. All right, boss, you got to get down. <laughs> he really wants to hang out. Um, and then it'll display it on the screen. And what's really cool is if instead of two, I make it 20, that's it. All I have to do is change one thing and we get all these rabbits, which is pretty fun. Let's go back to two and let's then make them run around on the screen. It's kind of sad. They're just hanging out here. So I'm going to go back to my class and add a second method called update. And um, for now, we could just say this.x plus equals this.speedx. Again, I'm going to be a broken record. Don't forget this. You're going to get an error if you don't do it. Um, and then this.y plus equals this.speedy. Then we need to make it be able to, you know, for now, then it'll run off the screen. So I'm going to say if this.x is less than 0 or this.x is greater than width, this dot speed x times equals negative one. So that's going to reverse it. If the speed is a positive number, multiplying it by negative one just reverse makes it a negative number. So it goes back in the same speed and vice versa. And we can do the same thing for the y. If this dot y is less than zero or uh, height, this dot speed y, oops, times equals negative one. Super. And then, so that's all we need for update for now. We can go up here and in our for loop, we can say rabbit.update. Again, super powerful and easy. Now it's going to, um, we create all those instances of the rabbit class, save them in our list. And then we go through the draw. Every time we go through all of those rabbits in a for loop, we update their positions and we draw them on screen. Now we get these cool bouncing rabbits, which is pretty awesome. So I can see one thing for sure that I want to change, which is that the rabbit is always facing to the right. And that's not super ideal. Um, you know, I want them to, when they hit the side, to change to face in a different direction. And there's lots of ways we could think about probably doing that. Um, but I know, I, I think we can use a little trick here. Um, we can use the, um, we can determine which direction it's going and have it change it around using scale. Um, so I need one more variable, and that's going to be this dot direction. 
And that's either going to be equal to um, one if it's going to the right or negative one if it's going to the left. And so what I can do is I can say if this dot speed uh, x is less than zero, so if it's a negative number, this dot direction equals negative one. Um, else this dot direction equals one. So again, if the speed is a negative number, we want it to face to the left. If it's a positive number, face to the right. And now we can use this direction variable over here like this. We can, after we've translate, then we can say uh, scale this dot direction in the x direction. Um, so a negative one, or sorry, one will be no change. It won't scale it. Um, it'll just face normally. Negative one mirrors it left to right. And then the y direction, we always want to be one. We don't want to flip it up and down. We only want to mirror it. And this is a really simple way to do this. Then we need one more thing, which is we want it to reverse direction when it hits the side. So we can say this dot direction also times equals negative one. Same idea. And, oh, no, sorry, we don't want to do it for y. We don't want it to change directions when it hits the top. We want it to kind of keep going the way it was going. And now, when it hits the wall, direction gets reversed, just like the speed. Um, and this is pretty cool. So already, this is pretty convincing. Um, and you can see sort of the power here. Let's add one more thing. And that's adding new rabbits, because again, we all know what rabbits do. Um, we could think about lots of fun ways of kind of doing this. Maybe we want to do it if two rabbits collide with each other. That's a lot more complicated. I'm just going to do it randomly. So if a random number between 0 and 100. So I'm going to do a 1% chance of a new rabbit. And we could try changing this. Um, if this is true, then we want to generate a new rabbit. So we could do rabbit equals new and let's make them come out of the center. And then remember again, this creates that rabbit, but it would delete it automatic, um, you know, as soon as we left that if statement. So we need to say rabbits.push and then add it to the list. So now every so often we should see, yep, there we go. New rabbits, new rabbits. So now it's a 1% chance um, of a new rabbit appearing. You could try changing this. Maybe it's too quick, maybe it's not fast enough. Um, it's pretty fun. So what's going on here? Again, um, we've got a list now of these rabbit objects. Um, I've also loaded this image as a separate um, file that we're using so that we're not, um, you know, if we get 100 or 1,000 rabbits here, we're not having 1,000 instances of that image. Um, and then in my class, I've got just my constructor, my methods that allow me to create these animations. And then in the draw, I use a for loop that lets me go through that list of all those rabbits, um, get them from the list, update their position, and display them on the screen, which is super cool, really easy. And you can see we get this like really kind of awesome thing going here. Lots more you could add to this for sure. And this is, I think, really fun, um, you know, simple things like putting a little shadow underneath the rabbit using an ellipse. Um, you could add like fences around this that you draw you know, using uh, rectangles and stuff like that. All kinds of really cool stuff. You could start making this really fun kind of demo. Um, in our next examples, I'm not going to code everything um, here on the screen just because it's going to take too long. Um, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can apply the um, ideas of object-oriented programming with, um, uh, you know, uh, animation and images and all that stuff that we've covered so far.